put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Under Suspicion, Movie Review. Henry Hurst, played by Gene Hackman, is to give a speech at an exclusive charity ball for Puerto Rico, having recently been hit by the Hurricane Lucy with extensive damage. And his amazing, glamorous wife, Chantal, played by Monica Bellucci, is there with him. They're keeping up appearances in spite of a strained marriage. Now, the day before, the police questioned Henry about his finding of a 13-year-old girl, almost 13-year-old girl, who had been strangled. And after he was questioned, they some details about the story don't seem to check out. So now the day after, they, they question him again. And from very early on, his story really seems questionable, even without some of the things that they've learned since he first came in for yeah and they may not have enough evidence they have circumstantial evidence now the captain of the force victor played by morgan freeman is being pressured by the superintendent henry has to get back to the party he has to give that speech and every so often it'll cut back to the party itself or to the exclusive party itself or to the outside of Puerto Rico. This is a movie that really gets a lot of the vibrant energy of Puerto Rico. And there's this, you know, there's dancing going on outside and like a parade kind of thing. And yeah, as it cuts back to the party itself, you know, you can tell time is running out. He has to give that speech soon. And so the question is, will they be able to put Henry behind bars? That's rare when it's someone rich and powerful, even when they may be responsible for something as vile as strangling two girls, both around the age of 13. This is a movie where not an awful lot happens. It hasn't... There isn't a lot of events in the in the backstory. It's it's complex, but there aren't a lot of separate events in the backstory of this, nor what happens, you know, as the movie plays out in the present. It focuses intensely instead on these few events and relatively little plot. Last minute notes, so Forgive them for, forgive me for them perhaps being a bit all over the place. Now, Henry himself early says that he he is mediocre, and given that he's so rich, everyone else who is also mediocre finds that unjust. That is, it's not fair. He's not a movie star. He's not glamorous, so he, you know he doesn't deserve all of this. And he and his wife do not have children. Now I am going to get more into Henry. Kind of gradually loses more and more of his dignity. Among examples is that he he maybe starts sweating and he has one of those 
fancy and really obnoxious cigarette tubes because you know you can't have it touching the lips directly and the first time you know when he just lights it and when he first needs you know Victor quick you know helpfully and there's there's maybe sort of this thing of hospitality maybe even you have to do this for me kind of thing where Victor gets out a an ashtray for him to you know get rid of the yeah I, I don't I don't remember what that's called but yeah you know getting rid of the outermost and then later he doesn't use the ashtray let's let's go with that now I did notice that and and one element of this is that within the you know within the these more glamour circles there's maybe a lot of gossip and that's part of what again you know with with the dignity because some of you know being being brought back in for questioning and maybe some other you know things involved with you know yeah it around those situations is you know fodder for gossip now I did notice that to an extent the female characters perhaps Monica Bellucci qualifies as an exception but to an extent the female characters in this are means to an end rather than an end in themselves to paraphrase that ethical yeah and that is obviously not as it should be it, it tends to be that the women are there as I mean the movie itself does point out that basically the women are being objectified by the men the, the men see the women as something that they have to impress and keep or you know win so yeah they, they get to be kinda like trophies and and or they're there for like sympathy or just you know to, to add detail to something but they don't necessarily have a lot of agency themselves but again you could make an argument that Monica Bellucci is an exception now I mentioned their strained marriage at the very start this this has great character introductions you see the first time you see the the main characters I should mention there's one more in addition to the three I've mentioned there is Felix played by Thomas Jane who's you know very he yeah he has a bit of a short fuse but yeah the first time you see these four characters you see them them coupled together you see Chantal with Henry almost immediately you see Felix almost immediately after you meet Victor and the very first time you see each of these four you know coupled up and such you see something you know yeah yeah you're seeing them outside of the public eye you're seeing what they're really like and Henry at first is excuse me he's he's rehearsing his speech and figuring out like last minute excuse me like alterations you know should he mention the money that the damages have been you know would would require should he call them you know considerable damages so, stuff like that and it comes off as kind of separate you know he's he's not he doesn't sound like this is tearing him up he sounds like this is just a speech and that's not necessarily true it might be because he's gone over the speech a million times and he can't be equally like torn up about it every single time but it does it really informs our first impression of him let's let's go with that and very yeah I, I love how they introduce the characters in this and then he tries to get Chantal because they have to leave this is the you know they're 
yeah, they, they're about to leave when he gets the call to come back into the police station. It should also be noted, he and Victor are old friends. They've known each other from they were young, and, well, you know how old the two actors are. So, And they are still at tough, well, this movie is a little... Last time I saw Morgan Freeman in a movie, he was still very much in top form. I'm not sure what the most recent thing I saw Gene Hackman in would be, but... Yeah, the you know he he approaches Chantal's room and like I said you know they have this strained marriage. He is like saying you know Chantal he's he's calling out her name because they have to go, and the last time he does it you know he's like staying right outside her closed door, and I feel like maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much into it and maybe it's just one of those convenient scenes but I feel like she probably. At least should have heard. She. It seems like his the voluminous voice, the small distance, the fact that it's just you know a simple door. She probably heard the the last time. And, and again, I should mention right at the start. You know, I have the utmost respect for victims of you know murderers and and the like and I would never suggest and and sexual crimes for that I would never suggest that that there is some way that the woman could have brought it on herself there's there's a Danish comedian Anas Madison or I, I'm not entirely sure if he's like known anywhere outside of Denmark but his his Danish nickname is the Duck, so which might help identify him if he is at all known to anyone not Danish. But he has this joke, and it's primarily it is about like it is yeah about pedophilia, not rape in general. But he says this kid should be able to jump up and down on a trampoline, yelling at the top of her voice, please screw me, you magnificent psychopath, and the one thing on your mind should be, I wonder if she would like some lemonade. And yeah, I, that's pretty much how I feel about it. If she does not consent, it, you know, obviously in that it sounds like she's consenting, but a child cannot consent. And, yeah, and with a woman, you know, yeah, you get consent, or, you, yeah. But with that, it, it seems like she should have heard, and she's doing this intentionally, which is is completely understandable. You'll understand why exactly in the over the course of the film, but, yeah. He calls out her name, and she still, you know, and, and then he opens the door because they have to go, you know. Although I suppose he could also have knocked, rather than just yelling, you know, knocking might be easier here. Anyway, he, so perhaps, you know, they certainly both have, what's it called, a dog in that race. He opens the door, and he sees her just slipping into this dress and it's Monica Belushi she looks amazing you know and he walks up to her and he kind of just touches her gently not not like groping her or something but just gently just lovingly and she just clearly hates it you know and then you know okay we have to go okay and then he lets go and, and walks off but yeah, you know, she may have been intentionally ignoring so that he would see her like that and want to touch her even though he would know that she would not want him to touch her. But then you could also say he should have knocked so as to, you know, maybe even ask, are you decent? Or just, you know, yell through the door, we have to go now and not open the door. But, yeah. Yeah, with, with, I'm not sure I should really give away exactly, yeah, I don't really want to give away about Victor and Felix, but yeah, they really inform 
the, the characters. And right from the start, these characters are kind of poking at each other passive aggressively, which again, you know, her getting dressed in front of him like that when, you know, heck, even let's say that she would like attention from him, it would still be the two of them do not have time for even a quickie before they get going. If they were so, you know, such, you know, yeah, if they were so inclined, if that was what one of them wanted, they should have tried to initiate that maybe a few hours before, but they're not going to do it right before they show up to this swanky party in front of everyone, you know, without any time to get presentable afterwards. So, yeah, you know, at least one, maybe both of them arguably are being passive-aggressive towards the other. Now, people... Maybe it's me. I tend... I, I try to be precise, especially with numbers. I resent when people say, you know, oh, this... When, when they're talking about a movie that's two hours, maybe not even quite two hours, oh, I wasted two and a half hours on this. How did you... It's not the movie's fault that there are, like, previews. It's it's really not. And maybe I, I don't know exactly about the rest of the world. But here, if you don't sit down until, like, you know, very shortly before the movie starts. And we only, we only have, like, 15 minutes of previews. And then maybe before that, 15 minutes or so of commercials. And, yeah, you know what, maybe that's not... It's, it's just half an hour and you know it's yeah if you don't want to I mean if you're getting up and you know in an on your seat you know during the movie that might annoy people but if you just sit down in the you know at the as the last trailer starts up which you can pretty much tell because it's almost exactly half an hour I'm sure people will forgive you for that so no there's not really any case to be made that the movie is wasting an, a half, half an hour of the movie that does not exist. I friggin hate that because it's gonna, when I hear that a movie is two and a half hours long and too long, I might not watch it. But then if I were to look it up and see, well, it's less than two hours. Okay, it might still be over long, but less than two hours, I could probably, if, if it's a movie I'm already more or less interested in, and people were calling this movie two hours, and it's not two hours. It's 103 minutes if you don't count the end credits, and only 106 with them. Yeah, this this is a issue that's pretty important to me, and have been has been really people are getting really obnoxious with this recently. As stated before, the plot itself is not all that, you know, complex. This is more of an exploration of the characters, a character study. And, you know, you see how people behave under pressure. This is directed, interestingly enough, very odd choice, but he does great work, by the director of Predator 2 and the clearly directed by the director of Predator 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Yes, the one where someone fuses with a motorcycle, which I still don't understand how that's a nightmare. It seems like it's just a really, you know, anime-inspired badass dream, but whatever. Yeah, it's, it's really completely different from those two movies, but he's fantastic at it. So, yeah, clearly he has you know, he can do very different styles of movie. I swear to you, there is not a single strung up, you know, skinned body in this anywhere. Now, I have not watched the 1981 movie, although I understand that Gene Hackman apparently did watch it and really like it and wanted to do this kind of sort of remake nor have I read the book, I would really like to, and honestly, I can't imagine that they are better. And I've, you know, only, you know, briefly looked over the 81 movie, but it looks like it has pretty 
pretty decent ratings and such. Meanwhile, this movie most definitely deserves more than a 43 Metacritic score and 49% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's just ridiculous. I love this film. I'll. It's not one that I've watched, you know, a great many times, but it's one of those movies where I just really get into it and I remember every single detail. This is maybe only the fourth time, possibly the third time, very possibly only the third time that I've watched it at all. And yeah, it's just, it, it really works. Now, Henry is a man who really gets on people's nerves. Or, you know, I already mentioned that this is, you know, it's seen as unjust. You know, he's rich. He has this mansion in Puerto Rico. You know, he wasn't hurt by Lucy, that's for sure. And he's a tax attorney. This is, you know, one of the most hated for what they do, even for jobs of the upper class and white collar government job kind of things. Yeah. And he is not apologetic. He does not like rationalize. He admits that this ticks people off, but he's not like saying, you know, well, oh, it's just, no, no, no. I'm rich. They hate that. End of discussion. That's, yeah. And yeah, so he starts rich and, you know, in part in control of the situation and, you know, classy, swanky, and gradually loses his dignity over the course of it. And an example I didn't mention before is that his suit gets slightly torn at the top of one of the sleeves. He, at times, seems like he doesn't even care about the victims, and he, yeah, there are, you know, some won't like any, you know, won't sympathize much with him. Some won't sympathize with the other characters either. Some will hate the guts of every single one of them, and all of these are perfectly understandable. And yeah, if this would take you completely out of the movie, this movie is not for you. And I maintain that, you know, that's not the point. You, you don't watch this movie to sympathize or to put yourself... You can't put yourself in the place of any of these people. These... I mean, maybe maybe parts of them, but yeah, you're not really supposed to, you know. So, yeah, and this is this is not a weakness of the film; it is merely a quality, and qualities are. You can you can really get into a quality, or you can really resent a quality, and if you resent a quality, an element of something, maybe it's not for you does not mean that it's not still well done. Now, to get more into Felix, he's kind of a bloodhound. And, yeah, he, you know, when he is sure that he has the right guy, he is just fierce, you know. And, yeah, he's annoying, even obnoxious. You can kind of see how this, you know, he would get results. He goes right for the jugular, basically. And some are called, you know, some have called that, you know, an overacted performance. I, I disagree. It's, it's the character, and even he is, yeah, I find him credible, and, yeah, again, arguably obnoxious. And if that's going to bother you, then this may not be a film for you. It is, it positions itself as a movie that is not for everyone. That's not, you know, that's not some kind of, you know, snobby, oh, you, do, you just don't get it, or it's, like, better than you. No, no, no. It's just, the movie needs to be this way. And, yeah, it, it won't be for everybody. But the movie, I'm really glad that the movie exists, and the movie definitely needed to be this way for it to work. 
and yeah, every character was credible and in general just yeah, well done. And the acting is amazing. And I mean, you can watch this just to see these two Hollywood legends duel. Most of the film is just the two of them in one room. And you know, Thomas Jane, I've liked him and everything I've seen. I think I I quite like his Punisher. I don't. Some people just can't stand it. You know, oh, it's not of oh, the comic books. It's not. You can't always take a character directly from a comic book and then put, especially back then, you know, it was made when comic books felt they had to get gritty because people were still trying to recover from the trauma of Batman and Robin. And so, yeah, it's 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 less out there than the comic book, although the, the slaughter of his family is pretty out there. But it's also, it works as an early Punisher. He's, it's early in his career. And if you want one more, like the comic, just watch War Zone. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, he, he does great here. And Monica Bellucci, several have pointed out, she holds her own in, in scenes with these two you know, heavyweights. The dialogue is honest, hard-edged, and smart. Some have called this overproduced. They're probably, you know, it's especially the editing that's, you know, it can come off as flashy and, you know, trying too hard. But honestly, it's just kind of a thing you get used to overwatching. And I'm not sure that a word that would make sense is eye-catching. It's, you, you could say it's like MTV kind of, you know, at times. It's, it's very much trying to grab your attention. And I think that works. It, it kind of puts the audience where the, where regular people are in this situation. They're, they're looking... They see these two strangled girls, about 13, and they want justice. And so, yeah, it, it gets kind of flashy. It's, it has a very intentional and not damaging to the film kind of... Yeah, it, it, like, like a one of those magazines that kind of tell all stories and with really eye-catching pictures and stories and such. Now... Yes, this is slow, murky, confusing. There are things that are unclear. You know, you don't... You don't know all the details of some really awful things where you, you know, it seems like, well, more about this, please. You know, it's, it's long on talk, short on action. It drags you down. These are strengths, not weaknesses. The road is an infinitely superior film, no question about it, and it got m many of the positive, you know, reviews and feedback that it deserved. The, it did have some of the same criticisms, and yeah, just because these qualities are mostly negative does not mean they are always negative. They can be done right, or the movie can need it. This is a movie about a very rich man who gets pulled down by this, you know, right from the start. We don't know if he did it, but over the course of the film, we, you know, we, we maybe make up our mind about guilt or innocence, and 
when it's something like this, you know, all of the, all of his secrets are being exposed, all of this personal, you know, skeletons in the closet, dirty laundry being aired out. If a movie like that doesn't drag you down, I suppose it's it's fine if it doesn't, but it just fits for it to do. I, if the movie didn't drag you down, if the movie maybe had more of a distance between the audience and the things on screen, it would be more of a escapist. Not not like, you know, pleasant kind of thing. No, no, no. But it would be, oh, look at that in their world, them. This, this says everybody has secrets. All of us could be made to look ugly if everything deep down was to be, you know, exposed, and, and of them alone. And, yeah, it's, it, it works for it. And, you know, the film is bleak, murky, minimalistic, and, indeed, it takes place in a single room. It's difficult to keep an audience engaged. And this is where some people are saying, you know, oh, it should be a play. I disagree entirely. It needs the element, the tool of these suddenly shifting, clever little flashbacks based on hypotheses. Hypotheses. And these aren't all that free. So, you know, if you're sitting down, it is still mostly them in a room. But when we leave that, either it's, you know, the party and celebration and such, excuse me, or it is these flashbacks and you know it's it has Henry and Victor there sometimes also Felix you know and they talk about what happened and it's not like narration over it no you know they they talk they talk about it as we see them in you know what may be a crime scene or the like and they might talk directly at the camera, basically. You might see them in the situation that they're in and such. And it's, without this, the film would not be a fraction of what it is. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I suppose if, if it were a play, if they had, like, a TV or something where they could put it up, but it would not be the same because it would break up you know, it would separate. And what this does is every second of the way you are there. You know, every so often your mind goes, but it's, there's a celebration outside. I'm, Henry's going to be late for delivering his speech. Okay, we, you know, stuck in this room. Okay. Let's go over the details again. And, you know, put you there yeah, it, it really works. And in these, you know, at these crime scenes and such, you know, the the police are constantly grilling Henry for any detail that seems off, any window into his guilt. Some have said this takes time to get into. I disagree entirely. I am there from frame one. This has an effective claustrophobic mood, what with being trapped in one room and goes into themes of betrayal, perception, character, trust. And as I said, the, Henry has his dark secrets revealed and it's very psychological and very intelligently done. And then, yes, some people are saying this is too long. They also said that of the road. I can disagree. I, something both movies are trying to capture that, again, are usually a negative is tedium. If you are experiencing tedium as you're watching a movie, that's often a bad thing. Usually a bad thing, you could say. It doesn't always have to be. And being stuck in a room when you're trying, you have to deliver this speech. It's a big deal. You're, you're raising money for fixing, you know, it, it has to, it's, it's going to help 
you know, tons of people. I believe he says that it's 1.3 billion dollars worth of damages. This, you know, the, the, the children that have lost their homes, the the sewers, oh, what was it? they've been like overflowing. Some something. It's just, it's a mess, and yeah, needs to get back. And being stuck in that room, going over the story over and over. That is tedious, and that is something that the film, like I said, the film puts us there, and part of being there is tedium. It's tedium for every character involved. Chantal sitting and waiting at the party by herself while people are giggling and, you know, guessing why is Henry not here? He's supposed to give a speech. Did he actually go to the police? Why is he, what, what does he need to do with the police? Being stuck in this room with one, sometimes two cops, you know, both of them. At one point, Victor literally says, I want to get to the party too. We're supposed to be there too. It's not just you. And yeah, it just, it works for, and, and again, if that is something that just is not for you, then the movie is not for you. And that's not an insult to you or the movie. And some have questioned, you know, would police really do this in real life? And I am, I just made a joke about police going out of, I make these jokes all the time. So let's say when things, you know, would, would it be right for them? Do they have the right to do this? I think so. I think what they do in the movie is within their rights because they do talk about arrest and probable cause and things like this and I believe when and and again you can see it from their perspective you can understand why they take that approach Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.